Welcome to the Matt Beck Podcast. Woke up this way. He's got a lot of cool stuff he's going to show you today. The latest news, industry topics, and business tips. For all hairstylists and salon owners, it's time to flip the script. Grab your precision scissors, barber combs, and swivel twist razors. Let's cut a bob, a quick shag, pick to cut with a little bit of flavor. Check out the live classes, product reviews, let's rock on. Don't forget to check out freesaloneducation.com. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, What's up, guys? It, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. Welcome to the show. So today, uh, I got a lot planned. We're going to do a lot of fun stuff. It's Monday. Super excited to have you guys uh, on the show. I see the chat loading up. Uh, So we're back. We're back. We're doing it. Uh, Keeping the show going. Uh, It's going to be every day at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So thank you for joining me live. Uh, Today, we're going to talk about the razor or scissor. Scissor versus razor. Um, And... What I want to open up this discussion about is not not what one's better, but I want to talk about uh, the differences and why you would use a razor and why you would use a scissor. So I got a ton of videos uh, lined up that are going to showcase those different techniques. Um, so we're going to look at razor cutting. We're going to look at uh, scissor cutting. I got videos from uh, Paul Mitchell. I've got videos from Sam Villa. Uh, I got my own videos. So I got a lot lined up. I also am taking your requests. So good morning to everyone. I see you guys uh, logging in. I see you chatting. Um, make sure you hit that share button right away so we can get as many people on this stream as possible. And also, um, yeah, I think that's it. So hit that share button. Let's get this thing going. Uh, The first video that I want to share with you guys today is going to be from my good friend, Andrew Carruthers. Um, This is an internal graduation. So uh, you guys have requested this um, in one of the past live streams. So I wanted to kick today off with that, uh, really showcasing what an internal graduation is uh, as opposed to doing an external graduation. So uh, I'm going to share that video with you guys now. I hope you enjoy it. Let me get it loaded up here. Make sure you're texting in any requests that you have. Post them in the chat. I'm watching that as well. All right, here we go with Andrew Carruthers. Hi, friends. Andrew Carruthers here, education director for Sam Via. Very often on these very blunt feeling bobs, we don't want to see surface texture or layering or graduation on the outer surface, but we want that more tucked in sort of feel. So we've already done this on this particular mannequin head on the on the right hand side. On the right hand side, you can see how nicely this is tucked in into the head shape. On the left hand side, it's cut as very much just a traditional bob. So we're going to show you a technique here called internal graduation that's going to help you to build this leaner shape without creating a lot of surface texture, layers, or graduation. Okay, so like I said, We've already done this right hand side and you can see a big difference between the left hand side and the right hand side. Even from the back, we started in the center back with that internal graduation and you can see how much more collapsed in the right hand side is over the left hand side. So on the left hand side, let's show you what we did. We want to stay incredibly organized because we're creating this internal texture that if we texture over top of it, what we'll end up with is too many holes in the hair because that's what we're doing. We're creating little holes. So we're gonna go back to the center parting, which is how we started. We're gonna take a vertical section. We're going to elevate that vertical section to about 45-ish degrees. We don't have to get too hung up on exact numbers, but we're gonna elevate in a way that it's very natural for me to get a graduated cutting line That graduated cutting line will be created by the angle of my finger. So you can see it's working shorter to longer. That will help to collapse that weight at the perimeter, but leave us just a little bit of weight here through the middle too, to give that illusion of fullness. If we go more vertical with the finger angle or higher with the elevation, it's going to give almost more of a layered effect, an internally layered effect which what that's gonna do is collapse the shape more through the middle and actually leave a little bit more weight towards the perimeter. So it's gonna make it very lean vertically. 
On this particular shape, we want to take that weight away from the perimeter, so we'll keep more of a graduated cutting line. And we just point cut very parallel to the hair, following that same cutting line. Now what we're doing is creating little peaks and valleys, little holes in the hair in a graduated cutting line. Now as you get up here, notice how the hair is wanting to fall down. If I just change my fingers a little bit, that's gonna allow the hair to fall more directly up and down for me. Because if I stay like this, go like that, then I'm probably gonna cut that corner off. We don't wanna see this texture sitting on the surface of the hair, that's why we're hiding it all through the interior. As we go to the next section, we'll grab another one of our dry sectioning clips and we'll clip that hair that we just cut out of the way. Because if I pick up a little bit of that previously cut section as we take the next section, I might add to the texturizing or the internal graduation on the last section and cut off some of those longer pieces that I wanted to leave in place. The angle of the fingers, we wanna keep that as consistent as possible. We wanna keep the length of each point cut as consistent as possible. But we don't have to be as hung up about it as if we were coming in to create an actual graduation or an actual layering pattern. Remember, this is more about texturing weight out of the hair, but we're doing with it a lot of intent and purpose. I'm using the six and three quarter inch Streamline Series Shear. And the reason I wanna use that is because the blade length is gonna allow me to get very deep into the hair, especially up here as we get longer and longer. Look how far I have to get the shear into the hair to create that internal graduation in the cutting line that we created from the bottom. If I could just kind of keep coming out this way and shallower and shallower, it's gonna create more of a shelfy feeling. The Streamline's a great shear too because it's really ergonomically beneficial to your hand. You can get in a lot of different hand positions because of the cutouts in the thumb without having to bend your wrist into weird positions, which is especially, especially beneficial in this type of hand position. In these graduated positions, a lot of times we're trying to kind of like bend our wrist into a weird position, whereas if we can allow the shear to rotate in our hand a bit, we don't have to get into those compromising positions that take a toll on our bodies over time. So you just continue as you work forward to stay in those very orderly sections, taking vertical sections. We're not gonna to touch this piece of hair because that lives in front of the hairline. So this will be the, our last section. Again, keep the elevation around 45, that diagonal finger angle, and then just point cut to the angle that our fingers are guiding us towards. Now, as we take that clip out and comb through, you'll see that a lot of that weight is collapsed out of the perimeter. We've got a really nice head shape that's starting to build, but we've also left a little bit of weight through here. And a lot of times when people are kind of fussing with their hair to try and get more volume here, getting more leanness here would actually help with that. A lot of times we get so focused on trying to get the fluff here but if the bottom is really square, then that gives the illusion of flatness. If the bottom is more tucked in like it is now, it gives that roundness, which gives the illusion of fullness too. So this internal graduation helps in a lot of ways to lean out the perimeter and also offer a little bit more of an illusion of fullness to the hair. So again, Make sure you're working really consistently and really organized so that you're not putting too many holes in the hair. Start in the center back, work in vertical sections, and make sure you're pinning the previously cut section out of the way before you take the next section, just again, so you don't put too many holes in the previous section. So 
Next time you have a guest in your chair that has that cool blunt bob, but they want it a little leaner through the perimeter, maybe a little more illusion of fullness through the haircut, internal graduation might be the way to go. Give us your ideas. Let us know what you think about the shape and what you think about the technique in the comments below. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Andrew Carruthers, Education Director for Sambia. All right. Let's see here. What's up, guys? Welcome back. So, um, feeling feeling the groove. Feeling <laughs> getting back into it. I'm definitely feeling the Monday uh, a little bit. I love Mondays. Don't get me wrong, but I'm definitely uh, feeling the uh, the rhythm. I'm trying to get back in the rhythm of this show. Uh, thank you guys so much. I see everybody. Uh, tons of requests coming in. Uh, layered haircut. Jamar's asking for a layered haircut. Uh, 80 20 barbers saying, how about a mid length men's cut? I think that's an awesome idea. So um, I got those loading up, uh, getting ready. So those will be coming up on the show soon. Uh, this show's theme is razor cutting and scissor cutting. Um, so I want to. I don't have to stick to that guideline, but I definitely want to talk, have that conversation. So what do you guys like more? Uh, do you tend to go towards a scissor or towards a razor? I would assume most of us use scissors the, the most, um, but what is your uh, what is your difference? So in that video, Andrew obviously did a scissor cut to remove weight from uh, the interior of a bob, to, but do it in a seamless way, which was really cool. Uh, so I really love that technique. Um, now, if you cut that with a razor, would you have had to remove as much or would it have been as seamless? Um, that's a good question to ask. So what do you guys think about that? Um, I, so I'm going to show you guys a razor cut bob later on as well. I also have a round graduated bob with a asymmetrical side that I want to share with you guys. Um, and like I said, we got the long layered haircut coming up as well. So, uh, before we get into that though, what I want to do right now is cut a curly shag for you because I feel like um, we've been doing a lot of straight hair and I see it in the comments. I see everybody talking about wanting to see some kind of curly hair. So I'm going to get into that now. Uh, let me load that video up. This is a curly shag. Uh, we permed the mannequin to create this. Um, I think you guys will dig it. Some of you guys may have seen it. If you have questions about it, post that in the chat um, and then... Yeah, we'll go. We'll go to it. Uh, Shane Chanel. I loved razors in school, but I lost my confidence with it. So now I always go to scissors. I think that happens uh, with quite a few people. I think uh, I think what happens with a razor with this tool uh, or this tool here is that we lose the confidence because we feel and we're told that it's bad for the hair when in reality, this blade, I would much rather, and this is going to sound weird, but I would much rather run my finger over my scissor blade than I would my razor blade. This is a very, very sharp blade. And as long as you have the right conditions in the hair and, uh, and a brand new blade in your razor, then this is going to create less damage, I believe, to the hair than a scissor. So, I mean, I know the scissor cuts more blunt, but this creates such a softness to the hair that uh, allows the shape to really, really fall nice and light. So depending on what you're going for, uh, if you've got a client with really thick hair, um, it's sometimes it's great. Like my, uh, my, wi my wife, Christina, she has the thickest hair ever. And I've had my best haircuts on her hair using a razor. When I use a scissor, it gets too bulky, too thick. Um, I have to do a ton of texturizing. So it takes a lot more time. Um, and she prefers a lot more when I do the razor cuts over the scissors. So I think that there's a time and place for all of it. Um, and I want to get your confidence back on that. Um, and that's kind of the, the reason for this particular show today on this great cloudy rainy Monday. Uh, some of you guys might have sun, but here it's, it's cloudy. All right. I want to keep you guys on. Uh, here we go. We're going to play uh, this video. Let's get started. Here it is. Today, we're going to cut a curly hair shag. When I'm working with curly hair, here's the thing. 
I, when I work at the parietal ridge, sometimes on straight hair, I'll go a little bit higher on it. But because I'm working with curly hair, that tiny little bit of a corner, if I start to work with that hair and start to elevate it, now I'm gonna start to build up extra weight around this, uh, the head shape. So I like to work really on that sole flat area. Another thing that I really uh, found interesting when I was working with Sam Villa last week and Andrew was how they sectioned off the side. They went a little bit further back. What I used to do constantly was to go right behind the ear and I would kind of use that as my corner. Now I'm going all the way down and pretty much connecting a straight line from back here on the about the crown of the head down to the edge where this is a straight line all the way down to the hairline. This way I know when I'm working with hair that's less dense than I am the hair in the back. So I went parietal ridge all the way around but went low parietal all the way back down to low crown in the back and then right here separate the division line and then that's where I start. All right, now we're gonna cut a shag. So we're gonna be working with some concave layering. Thing with concave layering is that you're gonna create a scooped line within the uh, haircut. And I'm also, you wanna make sure that this elbow is free, right? So you'll know that you're on the wrong side of the head if you come over here. And if my elbow is coming down and gonna hit the head and it's getting in the way, then that's not what you're looking for. You want to have the freedom of your elbow to move along with the head. Tools I'm gonna be using, this is my scissor. It's a five inch scissor. I like using a shorter blade. For me, a longer scissor just gets a little bit weaker towards the tip. When you're cutting precision hair, I like to have a shorter blade, a stronger blade that gets in there and cuts. I have them on the website, but literally there's only a few, like there's not many left. I don't even know how many, but there's not a lot. So if you want this scissor, you want to own it, and I don't know if they're making it again, you should go to our website, freesaloneducation.com and buy it. I'm also going to use the YS Park. This is a wide tooth comb. Uh, this is a 332 comb. I like that for cutting uh, curly texture. It allows me to get uh, a nice loose tension to the haircut. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wet the hair down just a little bit. Key thing in hair cutting is just to keep consistency with the saturation of the hair. You don't wanna cut some of it dry, some of it wet. All right, first parting, first section. Pretty much straight down center. I'm gonna go slightly to the left because I wanna grab a center section here. I'm gonna go all the way down to the hairline. So you guys can see, there's my section. Now I'm gonna lift the hair just like this. I'm gonna comb towards my body and I'm gonna lift up. And then I've got my length right here. My length is gonna be the guide. I'm gonna go in and cut short to long. And so I'm not taking away any length. I wanna keep that length, but I'm cutting nice short layers in the haircut. So you can see that. You see how it's gonna start to build up right away. That's the beautiful thing about curly hair and what I love about it. When you cut straight hair like that, it kind of falls and goes a little lifeless. And with curly hair, it just expands and grows. So I'm not afraid of taking this too short at this point because I'm trying to build that shape up. I wanna really kind of wrap that shape around the head, build a ton of volume up on the top and sleek make it nice and sleek down the sides. All right, so here's the next section, parting, vertical, straight down, going about a half an inch over, and then I'm gonna bring that to the previous, and again, lifting that elbow up, there's my guide, the bottom falls out, and I cut across just like that to the edge of my fingers. Now, I wanna have a traveling guide here, working my way around the head. I don't wanna overdirect everything to the center because I want that rounded shape in this shag haircut. I want a nice even base around the haircut with the length scooping out. I don't want longer layers to go. So if you don't want the longer layers, you don't wanna over direct, right? So traveling guide all the way around the head, working my way around. So now I take half of the old and I move that out of the way. So let me turn this so you can see. So I take half of the old, move it out of the way, grab a little bit of the old and bring it into the new section. And that's gonna come directly out from where it lives. That'll continue to keep that round shape in the haircut. Just like before, bringing it straight out from the head, scooping it up, finding your guide and cutting across. Some of you guys would want to probably push yourself and just grab all of this. The reason I'm not grabbing all of this is because the more hair you grab, the more over direction that happens. Now on a curlier, looser haircut, that's not a big deal as much as it is in a precision, like fine hair, straight hair haircut. But at the same time, consistency is key when you're working with haircutting. So just always practicing doing things the right way. So I'm not over directing too far. The more hair you pinch together, the more over direction that happens when you bring it out. So again, bringing it up, 
got my guide right there, kicking that elbow out. So now you're going to start to see how those layers are just starting to pop and build up. The other cool thing about this is that it's got a nice kind of flat shape to it, but it will bevel in a bit and it'll be nice and skinny through here. And then the other thing I like is you can see the layering pattern because we're following the round of the head. The layering is so even, so it just got a nice feel to it. It doesn't have that kind of heavy weight falling behind the ear. So now we're gonna do the same thing. So let me tilt the head down again. My body position is not gonna change. And the only difference is, so grab some of that old, grab some of the new, is I'm going to now be pushing the hair instead of pulling it, right? So pushing instead of pulling. So what I'm focusing on anytime I'm cutting hair is not only the elevation of how I'm working, but also the over direction. So it's focusing on this and it's focusing on this. So you wanna make sure that you're, you're looking at both ways, both things, because inconsistencies happen in both. So if your layering is inconsistent, then your weight's gonna be inconsistent when you look at it uh, vertically. If your over direction is inconsistent, then you're gonna have inconsistencies when you look at it horizontally. So here is our layering that's happening. Now, because we cut with the round of the head, you can see that even flow of weight. We also had a nice even kind of flow around this way as well, vertically. So everything is following the head shape. We could consider this kind of a round uh, haircut. So when you look at the side angle, you could see where it's pretty flat, but at the same time, this part of the head, from here down, it curves uh, really quickly into the occipital bone. So right away, this will start to build up. So that's why you don't wanna go too long, especially when you're cutting a shag, you don't wanna go too long with this part of the haircut because if you go too long with it right away, then it's gonna have a huge buildup of weight. It's just gonna expand out. If I was gonna now connect the top, I don't want that to be expanded too far out. So make sure, don't be afraid to go a little bit short in there. All right, so now we're gonna move into the sides. The key point of the sides, we already have our length established. Here's the difference. We've been working with density that goes from this part of the head all the way down to the nape. Now we're working with the density that goes from the same part of the head, but only to the top of the ear. So it's a lot less hair that we're working with. So we're working with less density on the side than we are in the back. When you're working with less density, you have to cut things differently if you want them to look the same. I know that sounds confusing a little bit, but as I'm working around here, everything's nice and even. If I continue to do the same thing on the sides, I would get a very weak feel uh, to this haircut or even maybe a hole. So what I want to do is I want to continue getting these shorter layers because that's what makes this a shag, but I want to push a little extra weight into the back area. So instead of bringing everything straight out from the head all the way around, I'm now going to bring it up here and cut it short to long in the very front of the head. So we're going to do kind of a, it's not face framing. I wouldn't say that we're framing the face, but we're going to use a technique like face framing that will allow those layers to kind of build around the face. Saturate this, keep the consistency. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring all of this here. So take a diagonal forward parting like that. So I'm gonna stand on the opposite side of the chair and that's where I'm gonna cut it. So just like that, bring it up here. And I'm gonna actually do a little bit of point cutting to cut this. Now the key thing for me in this part of the cut is to have the shape of this angle or the angle of this parallel pretty much with the forehead. I don't wanna elevate it too much. I don't wanna layer that too much. I want kind of nice feel to the shape of the head. So if you play the shape of the head, the haircut will actually flow that way. So there's our length, right? So now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna take another diagonal forward parting and bring it up in front of me. So this is all textured. So I'm not really that worried about my tension or anything like that. Uh, because this is going to have a little more of an organic kind of feel to it. And I just want to make sure that that connects in the back there. Continuing to bring that forward, what's happening is that hair is going from further and further away. And then I'll continue and then connect into this back area, bringing everything around and forward. So this is all to a stationary guide. And I'll go even past this hairline section because then I know that this connects. So I, I go until... The hair doesn't reach anymore. See, there's barely anything that even reaches over there. So now I know that I've connected this side 
and the back. So we've got this nice layering pattern, shifts into the back and then flows around in that even kind of feel. We're going to cut the other side. So I'll go to the other end of the chair. Another thing that I didn't really do prior to uh, working with Sam via last week, but um, actually measuring, which is something I never really did, but looking at it in the comb. So knowing where that is, so then I can grab another piece just like this, bring it out here, and then know that this is where I wanna cut it. So I actually take that piece, and the face isn't always symmetrical, but it's a good place to start, right? So just making sure that we have that same uh, length as our starting point, there's no reason why we shouldn't be measuring stuff. You measure things to make sure that they're correct all the time. So I measured that point. Now I can take my diagonal forward parting. I've got my guide, I can see it in there. Following the forehead, just like that. And I come through and I cut. So how did I know how short to cut this front piece? So here's where haircutting becomes not necessarily trial and error, but you start to figure out things that you like. So this first little piece here is right at the cheekbone. Now it's curly hair, so I go a little bit past the cheekbone and knowing when I held this out here, I knew where that bottom piece was gonna fall without actually checking it. If you're new to cutting hair, bringing it over like this, bringing it over and looking at this piece and holding it with your hand and seeing where, you know, where it will fall, that's a good way to do it. But for me, I just wanted to enhance. So when you're enhancing somebody's face shape, you look at the shape of the face, right? And I look at from the corner of the mouth here, and then the shape that happens, it starts to elevate up. So what I'm doing is I'm just enhancing that, building up that shape, especially with curly hair. I like to expand that out, open up the face a little bit so that that kind of, this goes with it. So just really finding a place on the face, which a cheekbone is a good area to, to start or at the uh, jawline, those kind of things, corner of the mouth. Look for a point that you're trying to build from. All right, now this is tying back into uh, the back portion where the hairline goes down, where that density becomes heavier. So that's where I wanna make sure that this is connecting through. You can see, well, you can kind of see. See a little bit of those tiny little hairs still sticking out. So I go through, point cut that. You can even wrap all this around, see what fits, nothing else left. So now we know that we've connected it. So you can see it's expanding out, goes really nice with that face shape. It's kind of creating a heart shape, gets sleek throughout. The top is kind of where it can either go right or wrong in, in a shag haircut on curly hair because you need to cut the top short, but you also need to realize that even though you're cutting it short, it can't be too short and it can't be too rounded looking. So one thing that I want to do is I want to kind of have a fringe that goes around. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start by cutting that. I'm going to sec section this right down the center. So from the, the nose up here, take my section. So now I've got this split into two. I could now continue to just bring this diagonal forward like that and connect it to this part. What I'm going to do is bring everything forward. I want to cut a nice rounded shape in the very front. Then I'm gonna go through and layer the back. So sometimes I push weight into a place so that I can cut it later. I want to cut this, I'm gonna cut it about at the nose because it's gonna pop up. And I know it's gonna pop up because it's curly. So I'm gonna work on a diagonal back now, following the head shape, and I'm gonna bring this forward. You can see how much tension happens on that because I use the tighter teeth. I don't want that much tension, especially when I'm cutting a fringe. I want it to be nice and light. So now you see the tension that happens when I comb with the, the wider teeth. I don't want to hold this too tight in my hand. I also don't want to go below when I take my section below this um, parietal ridge area. My finger angle is going to follow the face. I'm going to start with a little bit of an elevated line and I'm going to work right here. So you can see how it kind of pops a little bit. I'm going to take another diagonal back. And then when I take that diagonal back parting, I comb it forward and I only take from the parietal ridge over. Now my elevation is gonna shift. So now the first bit I cut lower and now I'm just gonna shift it up just a little bit. Here's the angle of the head. This is where 90 is. So I wanna come about zero. So this is below zero, it's gonna be super heavy. When you have curly hair, you don't want it super heavy, but you don't wanna layer it too much either. So straight out from the head and then I've got my zero degree point right there. I bring that out, I keep it at zero. I'm gonna point cut my line, just like that, and let it flow. 
diagonal back parting, comb it forward, take out the parietal. Now what is this doing for me as I'm working my way back? The biggest thing that it's doing is as I work my way back, this is getting longer and longer. I am gonna go in and layer it like we talked about, but I don't mind pushing that extra weight into the back. Um, so bringing it forward, nice little elevation, and that's gonna be my guideline. So now it's starting to connect through. Last bit, I'm gonna pull all this forward, take out the parietal, and all of this is coming now from the back, so this would be super heavy. We're gonna layer into it, but I wanted to have that nice little angle there. We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side, working diagonal back, and then grabbing from parietal over, and I point cut through. I'm point cutting to keep a nice soft line in there. I don't want anything harsh. See the heavy fringe happening. And now I wanna go through and I'm just going to, I'm gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna do this back portion dry. I've got some longer pieces back here. I wanna cut into this, I'm gonna do a little tease cutting. So we're gonna dry this first, and then we'll go through and uh, finish the cut. A couple things I wanna show you guys. I'm gonna use a couple different brand new tools here. So we got Paul Mitchell. This is the Lavender Mint Curl Refresh Foam. Revives and enhances texture. So I'm digging that. So we'll see what this is like. Honestly guys, just took this out of the box today, but I'm excited about it. And the fact that I was gonna cut a curly shag anyways, this is probably gonna put me to sleep because it's lavender. Now here's a couple key things with curly is to make sure that you get full saturation of the product. I like to add in some kind of cream into curly hair as well. Something with like a light hold, light control. So this product's also, it's taming cream. So I'm gonna put that cream in there as well. And that'll just give me a little extra kind of hold to the hair. When you do curly hair, when you work with curly hair, I think a lot of people will just throw products, especially like our guests at home. They'll take the product, they'll throw it in their hair, they'll scrunch it in like this, and then they just kind of go, right? And then they wonder why their some of their hair gets frizzy. The reason your hair gets frizzy is because not all the hair has product on it. So I'm gonna brush it through. And then when you brush it through, that will help saturate the product all over the hair. The second tip, once you fully saturate the hair with the product, then what I like to do is I like to take a damp towel. So this towel is kind of damp, but we'll make it a little more damp. And when you have a damp towel, it doesn't create as much frizz. So I'll take the towel and instead of my hands, I'll use the towel and scrunch that into the hair and that'll reactivate the curl a little bit. So just kind of working my way through there. The more you put like your hands or dry things throughout the hair, the frizzier it's gonna get. So we'll go through and do that. So you can see how the curl just starts to kind of expand back up. Now, we're gonna diffuse. Paul Mitchell Pro Tools Express Ion Turbo Light. We're gonna use this. I'm gonna put it on and then I'm gonna do low airflow, high heat. Biggest challenge with people and working with curly hair is they get impatient. You gotta be patient, especially with curly hair. It's just to go through and lift the hair, that's what these fingers are for, lift it in. Don't grab it with your hand, don't move the hair around a lot, that gets it more and more frizzy. You wanna let it dry, and you want the hair to get fully dry. If it stays kind of, if moisture stays in the hair, what happens is that as soon as you go out in the humidity or anything like that, the heat, and it starts to dry on its own, it starts to expand and kind of build out. So if you actually want to create a hairstyle that's gonna last you all day on curly hair, you need to get through and dry the whole thing all the way through. This is my least favorite part in the slime when I'm diffusing because then I have to like, it's not that loud and I'm not doing anything. So like people wanna have a conversation and I like working, I like to just keep going. So this fringe area, I'm just taking the, the fingers of the diffuser and lifting it up. This might be where you would go to low heat uh, because I'm keeping it right on the head and then that way you're not burning them. Today, she doesn't have any feelings so I'm going straight high heat, but I would go low heat on a client. So this product is cool, uh, Moisture Milk, it's called. I don't know if it's cool, but I, it seems cool to me. So do a little bit of that, and I'll run that in my hands. This is for frizz control, so I always wanna put something in my hands that kinda helps with frizz. So now, the only thing I wanna do to this is take out this weight in the back which we created so I don't wanna to take too much of it because this is why I really wanted to see it. So you can see how this is heavier right here, right? This is where we brought everything forward, cut the fringe. So that builds this stack, right? And it builds kind of a short to long feeling. 
So now what I want to do is I just want to cut into this. And I'm just going to hold the hair up just like this. And I'm going to tease cut into it. It's a half close of the scissor. So I'm half closing in, cutting through. So it's like this. Half close in, bring it out. So here, half close in, bring it out, half close in. And I just pinch the hair in my hand and I go in half close. Just like that. So I'll go through here and just work the round of the head in that crown area and take some of these longer hairs and just cut cut into them. All I'm doing is expanding this shape in the crown. So that's what I want to do. I want to build this up. Grabbing some of these longer pieces. There you can see, like that is, oh, first off, I'm so psyched on this haircut. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. Super fun. It's got a ton of texture in it. Look at that shape. So I love it. The expansion of that, the build up here, like you wouldn't have to do it this expanded if you didn't want to. You could do it a little sleeker. The way that you would do that is take less fringe. So just not bringing it as far forward. For me, I love that kind of heaviness to it. The flow of the layers off of the face, that all came from pulling it to the front and cutting it right here. And then that pushes that weight back. Then this kind of even feel all the way around, that was our concave layering that we did all the way throughout. So totally, uh, I love the cut, I love the shape. Hope you guys like it. If you guys, again, have any questions, make sure you post them. Uh, otherwise, I will see you guys on the next video. Thanks so much for watching. So that that haircut really uh, it got me got me fired up a little bit. I, it's so fun, like uh, going wait. Uh, it's so fun going into like the uh, videos that I've created over the year. Like I created so many so fast, and like sometimes I just watch them back, and I'm like I I can't even really remember making the video. So uh, so it's pretty fun to to reminisce and go through it and and look at it now. What I want to do is jump into a real quick video that's only three and a half minutes uh, long, but it's basically the same haircut, but I do it with a razor. So it's it's a little different because it's not on, on super curly hair. The end result, we wave it with an iron, uh, with a wand iron, but it's a similar uh, sectioning and all that. So you'll get to see the difference of this and you'll see it so fast. So I don't want you guys to forget about the haircut that we just did, but um, let me load up this this cut. All right, here it is. So this is going to be the same haircut, but done with a razor in a similar way. Also notice that at the very end of this cut, I do a really cool sectioning that I actually learned from Robert Cromines back in the day. I think he called it like the pop top. So I take all the top of the hair and I pull it forward and I just chop it off with the razor and it creates this explosion of texture on the top of the head. So I think you guys are going to dig this. Um, let's get started. Here it is. What's up guys? Welcome to today's video. So on today's video, what I'm going to be showing you guys is a shag like haircut, tons of layers, tons of volume. I think you're going to like it. And I'm also bringing back one of my favorite things, which is the razor. So check out the video. Here we go. All right, guys. So very excited to bring you guys this video today. We're going to do a razor cut. Um, this is a medium length cut, got a little bit of a shag feel to it, um, but it's a simple, simple technique. So we start off, we take off the top. So everything parietal ridge back to mid crown, and then I go straight down vertical center back. And then I'm using my Donald Scott twist razor. So this is a $39 tool available on freesaloneducation.com. So if you want to get one, go on over there. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm bringing everything straight out from that vertical straight out and I'm sliding from the mid shaft down to the ends, making sure that I don't cut into the ends. I'm trying to leave the ends preserved. You can always cut the ends later. And then I work my way around the round of the head using the round of the head as my guide and I'm pulling everything straight out and just doing that slide cut. So I see my guide from the mid shaft and then I slide down to the ends. What this is creating and what I love about this cut is that it's a round shape. So it's following the round of the head. I get nice even layers all the way around. Um, there's no weight lines. So what you're getting is a structured base for the top to kind of lay over. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this kind of um, haircut where we over direct the entire top section forward and we cut it so it's going to be disconnected from the bottom. So the shorter layers are going to hold the top, that roof up and give it volume, but we're not going to cut too many short layers in the very top. So that's kind of the basis of this cut. So remember going around the entire cut, keeping it very simple, just pulling everything straight out from the head, 
just focusing on the fact that I'm cutting mid shaft and sliding down, not going to the end. So you can see the layers coming to life there. Now I let out the top. I take a guide from a piece from the side um, just to get an idea of where I want to start. And then I cut that entire top. I cut through it using the Donald Scott twist razor and I just work back and forth. Now I'm working with a heavier stroke because my goal with this is to have a nice light feel to it. And you can see as I push that back, those layers fly over it. So shorter layers in the front, longer layers in the back. I'm gonna use Paul Mitchell Neuro Lift. Uh, this is a nice lightweight mousse um, that I put in the hair to give it some volume. And I run that through the hair. So you can see all those layers popping through. This is one of my favorite ways to layer hair because of the fact that it's simple and um, super effective. Now I use a little bit of Paul Mitchell Neuro Protect. That is a heat protectant. So when I get the hair 80% dry, I spray that in. Then when I get 100% dry, I spray it in and I do my iron work. Using a wand to curl this thing out, I continue that same pattern just all the way across the head, all the way around the round of the head, curling everything off of the face to get my end result. So now that you see my end result, hope you guys like the cut. Check out the bang, all that movement, all the layers. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, and like always, if you like this video, then make sure you hit the like button, hit the share button, share this video with all of your hairdresser friends out there. And remember to go to fseondemand.com. I have hundreds of videos from me and a ton of my other hairdresser friends uh, that we've been creating for free for you guys on that app. So go check it out, fseondemand.com. Thanks for watching. All right. So as you guys can see, that was fast, right? That was, uh, it was super fast. And that's kind of the difference in my opinion between not only the, the texture that you get with a razor cut, but also the speed at which you get that texture and the, the end result. And the, one of the key things about that is that, um, when you cut with a razor, a lot of times you're not doing a ton of dry cutting afterwards. Cause you've got that simplified shape and that, that, uh, kind of diffused line. So what happens, and we were taught this, so rewind my thoughts. Okay, so back in the day, we were taught precision cutting, right? Precision cutting, precision cutting, cut a bob, cut strong lines, do all this stuff. Now you see people, they cut all these strong lines and they do all this stuff, but then they go in with all these texturizing techniques and to create softness and all this stuff. Well, we, have, we now have tools that kind of create that for us along the way. So when we think about speed at which we work and um, and really the new standard that's gonna happen within the salon industry is faster work, faster speed um, to, you know, just for a, a little bit. I don't think it'll be like that forever, but just being able to be more efficient. And honestly, I think that's what brought a lot of the success that I had behind the chair and why I was able to produce the numbers that I was able to produce when I was full-time behind the chair is because of the speed that I worked and the consistency, because I, I took an hour and a half, two hours max with every client, uh, cut and color. And I'm able to do that with the, because of the amount of techniques that I had in my brain that I was able to, you know, take each situation and apply whatever technique I needed to get the job done in the amount of time that it needed to be done. Um, you know, I see stylists taking three, four hours with a client, which is not, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just when you're, you would have to charge an astronomical amount of money to spend that amount of time with somebody uh, because you can't get as many people in throughout the day. And that's just, you know, the way it is. Uh, obviously, you know, the Audi dealership doesn't need to sell as many cars as the, you know, Kia dealership or whatever, right? So it's, it's a volume thing and it depends on what type of hairdresser you're trying to be. But if you can get that, you know, higher range pricing, and do volume at the same time, but still have great quality. Like that's a win-win, I think. So just take all these techniques and think about it that way. Uh, the razor that I used in that video was the Donald Scott Twist. Um, I like this because it's similar to the carving comb, which is these guys right here, but um, it doesn't have the comb on the end. So you can choose what comb you want to use. So in that video, I was using the YS Park 339, I think. Um, and I can just use this to cut. Has a little swivel on the finger here. And you've got your 100% cutting side, and then you've got a 25% uh, carving side, which is able to go in and just take out 25% of the hair as you're working. I was like keeping that so close to my face, just cross my eyes. All right. Um, 
Hope you guys are enjoying the show. I got a long layered haircut coming up here. Um, I think we've made our point about the differences between scissor and razor. Um, let me know your thoughts in the chat. And uh, I think that's it. But um, I want to go into a long layer haircut now. Um, this is a Paul Mitchell uh, video. So I know that these videos have had a lot of Paul Mitchell products. Um, I'm not really worried. Like, I, I don't care brand wise where we're at. I'm, I'm more focused on what the education is. So obviously apply your products, whatever products you're using in the salon, flip it and, and you know, cater it to these techniques. Um, I'm just very grateful that I have Sam Villa, um, you know, giving me his library. Paul Mitchell gave me their library to be able to show you guys these videos. And I love watching them and learning from them as well. So um, this technique specifically is Jason Reyes. Um, he's been on this show. Like I've played his videos before. Um, this is a long layered haircut. It's beautiful. And it's obviously on a model. So, um, so you guys get to see it on some real heads, uh, which is really nice as well. So here's Jason Reyes from Paul Mitchell, uh, doing a long layered haircut. Hope you guys enjoy it. Here it is. I start off this haircut with three triangular pre-section panels. If you notice, the first panel goes from the recession to the lower crown area, and the two side ones go slightly behind the front hairline to the lower occipital bone area. I take a vertical section on my first panel, utilizing a high elevation, 90 degrees past the roundness of the head, I point cut to set my guide. I recomb the hair again, and clean off my guideline. This will help me with consistency throughout the haircut. My next section is over directed onto my previously cut. So again, using a high elevation, making sure that my comb and my fingers travel together for consistency with my over direction, elevation, and tension. I continue moving forward with a traveling guide. Adding on to my previously cut. Taking slightly diagonal sections as I continue to move forward. Ensuring that that hair is combed out completely from the base. And my last section mirrors the division line of that panel. Again, utilizing the same elevation. Back towards that crown area with the traveling guide and slightly point cutting. I then create a division line that goes behind the mastoid process area and elevate that hair straight up and utilizing my longest layer as a guide, I cut the perimeter length, point cutting for softness. I clip that off of my way and clip the panel below to ensure that I stay with my disconnection and I take another vertical section standing now on the opposite side getting a guide from my previously cut panel, elevating that hair up, pulling towards me, and point cutting. If you notice, I also lay the hair away from my fingers, and this helps me control a little better when I'm cutting. Over directing onto my previously cut section, making sure that my guide is clear so my sections aren't too thick. They continue traveling forward, recombing again and always ensuring that my fingers and comb travel together, almost like a truck in a trailer. And over directing back towards my previously cut. As I get to my last section, I'll do the same. That section will mirror the division line of that, creating a division that goes slightly behind the mastoid, elevating upwards and cutting the length. Here I'll pivot off of that point at the lower crown area. Each section is gonna pivot off the same point, cutting from short to long from front to back, making sure that the shortest piece is at the tip of my fingers, 
and I continue elevating and slightly shifting my elbow upward to ensure that I get a longer length towards the back. Over directing each section onto my previously cut, I comb that hair towards me, cutting from short to long, and again slightly shifting as I cut towards the back. I'll stay in the same body position and this will help ensure consistency with the length. I'll now push that hair towards the center as I'm standing on the opposite side. Again, point cutting that length. The shortest piece is gonna lay slightly below the chin. And then I divide the hair and I check for balance. Because this is disconnected, I'm looking for that visual connection. We'll then go and blow dry the hair and prepare it for refinement. In refinement, I'll start down the center back and take a vertical section, elevating that hair upward and slicing through. If you notice, my scissors a little bit more vertical towards the hair. And what I'm looking at is the density. Wherever I see that the hair is more dense, I'll remove a little bit of more weight to make it a little bit more translucent. This will create some space and added movement to the hair. I'll continue working with wider panels, removing that weight. Continue gliding my scissor. Again, looking at the density. We're trying to achieve a little bit of more translucency. I'll separate the hair slightly above the parietal ridge. And the reason for that is because a lot of times below that parietal ridge, the hair tends to be just a little bit less dense. So my focus is where there's more density. Working through that top area, elevating it straight up. And with my scissor, really just creating some more space repeating the same process on the opposite side. And with the fringe, I'll take that panel slightly backwards and I'll deep point cut into it so I could create added movement. Finishing the hair off with some spray wax. This will enhance the texture that was created. And here you see our beautiful finish. Soft, slightly longer, disconnected layer, salon friendly, but still with an edge to it. Looks real cool, right? So uh, that's uh, Jason Reyes from Paul Mitchell. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that video. I actually really loved, so a couple things I loved about that. I loved his sectioning at the beginning. So for me, uh, sectioning can get a little bit repetitive when you're doing longer layered haircuts. So I like the disconnection to keep the strength around the perimeter. Um, so really working on those interior disconnected layers in there. And then that technique at the end when he blew it dry and went in, just kind of slid through each section and took some like uh, seamless kind of layering into it. Uh, reminded me a lot of Andrew Carruthers technique at the beginning for the Bob that we uh, talked about. So it was very similar, I felt in, in that way. Um, so hope you guys liked it. What was your favorite part? Uh, love the color. I actually think, so I have the video of that color um, I think I'm going to dedicate tomorrow's show because we're so haircut focused today. Uh, let's focus it on color. So let me know what techniques you want to see tomorrow, uh, color wise, and I'll make sure that we get those up there. I can make sure that that's one of the colors that we show. Um, so I got two videos left. I want 80, 20 barber to get their fill. Um, let me see where I'm at with the loading of, so it's almost loaded up the medium men's cut. Uh, so I'm going to show that last and then, um, ombre that'd be a good one cool um can we see cuts on with older clients so here's a here's a question that gets asked to me a lot um uh they say younger kids or older clients so uh, the, i understand that you don't see a lot of that on the internet you don't see a lot of people cutting older clients and all that stuff um the purpose the the real the reality is to me like I, I would put the same haircuts, maybe a little bit different, but I really can't even imagine 
um, on my older clientele, I don't do haircuts differently because they're older. Um, and if it's an old person haircut, um, they're probably not my client. Like if it's a, if it's a haircut that is like, uh, and I have a lot of older clients, so let's just put it out there. I don't do old haircuts on people, um, because I want them to feel good. I want them to feel fashionable. So all of these haircuts I would do, um, especially shorter haircuts, bobs, um, pixie cuts, uh, medium length haircuts, shoulder length haircuts. So, uh, rather whether I'm doing them on a younger person or a mannequin or whatever it is, um, age to me is, is a number. It's not a haircut. So, um, hope that makes sense to you guys. Uh, let's see, but from a color standpoint, I get it. I get under like gray coverage and all of that stuff. Um, so we'll figure that we'll figure that out. Maybe, you know, Maybe because this show is so consistent now uh, and I'm doing it every day. Um, when I do get back to doing clients in the salon, I'll film more of that day-to-day -day stuff and I can share that with you guys uh, on this show, which would be kind of fun and I can talk about it live and all of that. So uh, let's see how to keep darker root touch-ups from darkening previous brighter highlights. That's a good video. I like that. Um, all right, cool. So I'm going to get into... This cut is an asymmetrical bob. Um, it's a round shape. I really love, this is one of my favorite haircuts that I've ever done, uh, to be honest. So I wanna share it with you guys. It's right here. Um, so I'm gonna share this video with you guys and then we have a longer uh, men's cut. Before I do that, and I haven't promoted this all day, which is kind of a bummer. I should have talked about it before, but our app, the FSE Now app, which I'm gonna share with you guys the video right now and then I'll be right back. Let me play it. So that is the app. Uh, so FSE now. So basically with, with you guys to kind of give you a, a summary of it, um, it's a free app. You don't pay for anything. Um, you go on the app, you create a profile. Um, you can also do it on freesaloneducation.com. So if you're having any issues signing up on the app, just sign up on the website and then go sign in on the app. But we have a community on there. Uh, so you can post your work. Also, your profile becomes a public profile on styliclocator.com, which is a website that any client can go on to to find a stylist. They can see your work, see your profile, send you a message, um, and also all of our education, including these videos, these live streams, um, the breakdown of some of these videos that you're seeing, like with Paul Mitchell and Sam Villa, all that stuff uh, is found in individual videos on FSE. Uh, now as well. So go to freesaloneducation.com, sign up. You'll see the link to download the app and you'll be all set up. If you have any issues, just reach out to me via email. Um, some people have their own unique issues, so I'll, I'll address them that way. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you're from the UK uh, or really anywhere that doesn't have a US number, phone number, um, we're trying to adjust that issue in the app. So all you have to do is go to freesaloneducation.com and sign up that way and you should be good to go. Uh, and the app will have an update soon to where you can put in phone numbers that are outside of the US. Um, but one person had an issue. I don't know if it's multiple people, but I definitely know that I got an email about one person uh, not being able to sign up in the app that way. So, uh, so go sign up become part of the community. We're about 2000 strong, uh, on there and it's only been a week. So tons of hairdressers on there. Uh, I'm really excited to, to see your guys' work, uh, share it on this show and just, you know, just build a better bond between all of us, uh, because education is the key to all of that. So, um, awesome. Love it. Love it guys. All right. I'm going to, uh, play the next video. And this is an asymmetrical Bob. I think you're going to enjoy it. 
It's going to be very useful for you. So here it is. What's up, guys? Welcome to today's video. So guess what? Today, we are going to cut a pretty cool haircut. Let me actually grab that haircut and show you what it's going to be. So this is the haircut that we're going to be working on. I know it's a little crazy style, but we had some fun with some spray wax. We'll talk about that in a second. But just the lines that we're going to create in this cut, you can see how it passes around. We do sort of like a round graduation. Actually, it is a round graduation. And we pull it into the back. We create this point. So a uh, ton of technical things that you're going to learn in this cut today. Also, my new friends at Eva sent me this box of products so today we're gonna kind of build this haircut around uh, using some of those products as well so let me unbox some of these products and share with you guys what they sent not only did they send a ton of really great products but this box is hilarious speed dating the perfect arena to get a bite-sized taste without the instant life commitment Evo is committed to no commitment unless you want to commit then we are fully committed or not I mean we like you but no pressure who wants to conform to the standard social relationships we get where you're coming from unless you want something more which we're up for but you know whatever the funniest part about that is the fact that that's exactly, I think, how I explain things. So it made no sense, but it makes sense. All right, so we got a ton of products here. We have a dry spray wax, which I use in this style. I also use the lockdown. So I will talk about those in the video. The rest of these products I have not used yet. So um, I have experience with these two. Not so much with these. I'll most likely be doing future videos with these products so that you guys can kind of learn more about them. But for now, we're going to stick to these two, this haircut. I don't want to waste any more time. I'm super excited to show you guys this technique. Thank you to Evo for the products. Let's get started. All right, guys. So we're going to get started with the haircut today. I'm super excited to bring you guys this round graduation. Um, key things here just to start it off is the sectioning. Sectioning is pretty standard. Uh, parietal ridge back to mid crown, wrapping it around, creating a U shape on the top of the head, splitting at the division line, and then breaking it up into two panels in the back. Now I'm going to start working on the right hand side first. Now my finger angle is really important in this haircut, making sure that that finger is pointing in the direction you want to go with your shape or the outer perimeter line. So what I wanted to do first in this cut is really create, and this is a um, kind of a, a, a Sassoon um, inspired start to this cut. Um, and it was in their graduation series. So what I wanted to do was create a hard line then build a graduation off of that. Uh, and that's where I took for one of the videos. Then we're going to go and I'm going to put my little spin on it, which is taking the top and doing some dry cutting um, to really create a bunch of texture on top of the head. So taking a very classic shape um, and then modernizing it or just giving it my own touch, not necessarily making it modern, but just giving it my own flair uh, at the end. So the way that you create the line is just keeping everything at a low elevation. Um, pretty much we'll call it zero degrees, but I don't like to say zero degrees because I think the degrees confuses people. I just want to keep it at the lowest elevation possible because the lower your elevation, um, the stronger the line is going to be at the bottom. So I start off cutting that line. Notice as well that finger angle is kind of pointing up more towards the nose than it is down towards the chin. And what that's going to do is start to bring that line up. Um, this haircut I think is cool and it stands out because typically we follow the jawline. I wanted to go kind of from the back up to the more of the cheekbone area uh, and kind of enhance that a little bit. So um, that's my take on this haircut. So now I've got my hard line. You can see that graduation built in there, uh, but it's super heavy. So I'm going to go through and now just elevate it slightly, still keeping it as a graduation, but and and then follow the round of the head um, to keep my round shape, right? So if you look at the outer perimeter line or the line that runs horizontally, that's going to be the shape that we're creating. So just going up through there, taking small half inch uh, sections or partings and then bringing them out and graduating them up. Now your initial guideline comes from your line at the very bottom, at the hairline, right? So uh, just make sure that's why you want that strong perimeter line first. Then you go in and you will um, graduate from there. So 
So you'll notice that my fingers are pointing down. I think this is a key thing, and, and a lot of people struggle with uh, hand positioning and hair cutting. I always think about my thumb is pointing in the direction I'm going. So if I'm moving to the right, then my thumb will be pointing to the right. And you'll notice that when I take this section. Then I, what I want you guys to notice is that when I go to the left side, now all of a sudden my fingers are pointing up. My thumb is pointing to the left because that's the direction I'm moving in that way. That just keeps me consistent in my combing. Um, and the more consistent you are with combing, the more consistent your haircut is going to be. So taking a little bit of the old hair, grabbing some of the new hair, making sure you have a clean guideline in there, and you don't want to take too thick of a section. Uh, too many people grab too much hair at once, um, and in some cases that works, but in precision cutting, when you grab too much hair and you're over directing it too much, you're building a totally different, um, you're pushing weight every single time you do that, I guess is the easiest way I can say it. So just be very careful with how much weight, how much hair you're grabbing in your section. And it's mostly because of the over direction, not because you can't see your guide. So we're finishing up the right hand side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up the video um, as we do the left hand side because it's exactly the same. The only difference is make sure you watch my hand positioning and where my thumb is pointing and that's the only change that we make. But we cut our line and then we do our graduation. So now we're going to kick off the blow dry using the lockdown product from Evo. The thing I love about this product is it's not only a smoothing treatment, but it has a little bit of hold. Um, it gives style control and it's designed for frizzy and unruly hair. So if you have anything like that, then this is definitely a good product for you. So check out this uh, in the blow dry. I'm going to do a flat wrap technique, really working the head shape, um, especially because this is a round shaped haircut. I want to work the round of the head back and forth, doing a little bit of leafing just to add a little bit of volume and just working my way through the blow dry. Now I'm using the Ergo Diamond Head Paddle Brush. I love this uh, brush. It's one of my favorites uh, because I love a paddle brush, but I love a mini paddle brush even more. So if you want to check one of those out, go to freesaloneducation.com. You can get yourself one of those brushes. And then I'm going through with the uh, Paul Mitchell Pro Tools um, iron and just working um, some iron work in there to smooth everything out. And then I let down the top and I start to blow dry. You might ask, why did I blow dry the bottom first and then blow dry the top? I like to keep it separated, get the bottom exactly the way I want it, and then let down the top, blow it dry, then I can smooth that out. So now we're gonna finish this haircut, and really just personalize it using a tease cutting technique. What the tease cutting technique does is it creates a really soft edge to your line. So basically what I do is I elevate the hair. Now when I put the scissor into the hair, it's a half close of the scissor. So as I move the scissor into the hair, I'm actually half closing it, which pinches the hair in there and it actually removes the hair that way. I'm not just sliding the blade um, along the hair. I really wanna make sure that I'm cutting. So when you practice this technique, um, practice it on a doll head or somebody you don't like, um, you wanna make sure that you practice the technique sliding in and half closing the scissor and then releasing and then slide in, half close the scissor and release. And then I'm working around the head shape from the mid crown area all the way around following the round of the head to keep this a round feeling haircut. So now as I get to the front of the head shape, the only thing that's really going to change is I bring it over to me instead of continuing to follow around the round of the head. So I'm going to push a little extra length right into that front center um, of the cut because then I'm going to go in after this and I'm going to cut it a little bit different. So as I work to the left hand side, the body position gets a little bit um, different. So what happens is now I scoop underneath and I pull it towards me. My key thing here is that I really want to make sure that um, every time I take a section, I'm doing it the same way as I did on the opposite side. And not the same way as like my hand positioning is the same, but the same way as I'm pulling the hair the same way. So I was pulling it back to me on the ones on the right side, and now I'm pulling it back to me on the left side. 
Um, as we get to the front, I over direct it a little bit back and we push that weight to the front. And then you're going to be able to see uh, now as we move into it um, what I'm going to do in the top of the haircut. So now we're going to start putting in our outer perimeter line. Now, a lot of people think that the line happens in the wet cut. The wet cut, what we were doing at the beginning is just really, we were establishing our shape and establishing our length, but not necessarily the outer perimeter line of the haircut. So what I do is I start in the back and I work my line up to behind the ear. And then I go to the very front of the head and I start to decide exactly where I want that to hit, which is around the cheekbone area. So um, I define the line in the back or I get it started and then I go to the front and I connect it into the back and that seems to work the best for me. So just using the tip of the scissor and then as I get that line in, I go through and I just kind of chop away at it until I get the line exactly the way that I want. So notice all the tiny little details that go into creating this outer perimeter. Know that this did not take me the two minutes that you're watching. This probably took me 10 to 15 minutes of just really going around and cutting in that outer perimeter line. Now I just finish up with a little bit of point cutting just to take out a little bit of density in the shape just to soften everything. And then in the very front, I go back in with some tease cutting to finish off this technique. And that's a heavy stroke you can see, but what that does just removes a ton of weight, lightens up the bang, gives it a side bang kind of feel to it. So decide which direction you want that to go in, pull it all over there and cut it. So I'm gonna finish up with She Bang a Bang the dry spray wax from Evo. I'm gonna spray that in, add a ton of texture. You can see this is the calm version of the style. So lots of texture in there, but still that nice perimeter line. I really love the shape. And then I go and really blast it with the product because I wanna just create a ton of texture in this thing. Um, give it some volume, give it some movement. And this to me is something that would be so great on curly hair, straight hair, it works on pretty much everyone. So um, try it out, let me know, tag me at Free Salon Education on social media so I can see your work or your version of this cut. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. See you on the next video. Thanks. So what'd you guys think? That is absolutely one of my favorite uh, cuts that I've done. It, it just, uh, there's something that like, as you, as you do more and more hair cutting and, and just keeping educated, like figuring out new things, those harsh, those like real strong lines uh, created, but then with texture, I've talked about this. I think I talked about this on the past uh, couple shows, but I think my style is really, those hard lines, but then, you know, an explosion of texture. I just really love that look uh, of the messy, but perfect, perfectly messy kind of thing. Um, so I'm glad you guys are liking it. I can see it in the chat. I got one more video for you guys. This is for the 8020 Barber uh, on here. Uh, hopefully they hung in and <laughs> through all of these women's cuts today. Uh, this is a fun episode. I hope you guys liked it. Um, if you haven't gotten a chance, then make sure that you download the app. Also, if you guys could do me a favor, um, and hit the like button because we, we topped, I want to top the last show. So every show I needed to get better, uh, we need to share it. And I saw a lot of you guys tagging your friends in the comments. So thank you so much for that. Um, we need to share this show and we need to like it, uh, so that we can grow it. Uh, it doesn't grow if we don't hit the like button. If we don't hit the share button, it doesn't grow. It, it, you can't keep it to yourself, right? So, and it's more fun when we have, uh, tons and tons and uh of stuff like that so let's see um all right cool i loved all your requests today guys all right we're gonna do one more men's cut uh and then we'll close out the show so i hope you guys like this it's gonna be a medium length uh men's cut let's get started here it is all right guys so we're gonna start off by taking a center parting what i want to do is i want to split the head in half because I'm gonna work on each half of the head, but I wanted to work from the occipital bone over. So that's just the easiest way. Uh, most men's cuts you're gonna create are gonna start with a balanced structure. So uh, sectioning in a balanced way works the best. So we're gonna start off by taking a vertical section straight out from the head. Now elevation is the key to this haircut being uh, in a form of what men are gonna like. What I wanted to do is create layering, not too much graduation. So uh, in the back, the occipital bone 
kind of bends down towards the nape. So what I'm doing is I'm elevating up higher than that to create that kind of at least 90 degree, if not a little bit higher angle in the haircut. Everything's coming over to the previous section. So traveling guide across the back of the head and we're just working our way all the way over to the corner. So everything's just gonna keep coming straight back, creating that more balanced uh, shape in the back of the head. Now you'll notice that I shift my, the way I hold my scissor towards the bottom section. That's just so I don't have to twist my wrist too much. Um, it's just a technique that you'll see some people using uh, just for a comfort thing more than anything. So working my way down. Now, what I've done is obviously created a lot of length on the bottom. We're gonna go through and cut that later uh, using a different technique. So when I'm doing hair cutting, I'm not always uh, going straight for what I want the length to be. I'm working with the layers first, getting the layers where I want them, and then I'll deal with the length later uh, throughout the cut. So I'm keeping my body position the same. Now when I'm going through, I'm scooping the hair. So I'm doing more of a backhand comb technique. What that's gonna do is keep the consistency of how I've been combing the hair throughout the entire cut. We've talked about this multiple times, every vlog on um, always combing towards your guideline. So my guideline is coming from the center or from the left. So I'm combing the hair towards the left to meet the guideline. Anytime you move your guide or you comb your guide towards the new hair, you're shifting your guide from where it lives and you're gonna throw off your entire haircut. So scooping that hair, bringing it to the guide, and then just working that palm to palm technique uh, the same exact way that I did on the opposite side. This is building our structure. This is really setting the layers in the back of the head. This is the most important part of the cut because if this is too bulky or too uh, built up, too graduated, it's gonna complete, it's not gonna look like a men's cut, it's gonna look like a women's cut and that's not what we want. Or it could get moldy if we leave it too long. So really getting those layers right. Now a lot of you are probably asking, well how do I get the layers right? How do I um, pick the length of the layers? I think it's just based on your guest. So just figure out where you think the layers are gonna be comfortable and then give them maybe a month's worth of growth so they can come back in and get it cleaned up. Now we wanna round off the back. I don't wanna square it. Uh, the reason I wanna round it is because I'm gonna connect it to the back portion. So we started off, I used my DB20 scissor. Now I'm using my Chopstick Pro from Donald Scott. This is another, uh, I think, $35 to $39 tool on free salon education. I love this tool for women's cutting and men's cutting, but this is where if I wanna get in tighter to the head. So um, we use the carving comb when we're working with layering and texturizing. With this, this is more for a precision type feel if you wanna get really close to your section. Uh, more like a feather razor. So I'm combing and I'm working uh, the angle across, cre creating that horizontal line, and then I just shift into the corner and round that corner off, uh, which kind of gives it a nice hug to the hairline. So now I comb the hair in the direction I want to part it. That's another key thing that I like to do. I like to get the hair flowing and then go for my parting. It just keeps you from getting tangled up in the hair. And then I'm working diagonal back. So I want to start off, I'm going to find my connection point. Now this doesn't have to be exact. It's how long do you want the front of the hair to be? I want him to be able to tuck this hair back. So I'm going to go a little bit longer with it. And my strokes with the razor are nice and heavy because that's going to give me a lot more texture in the haircut. So you'll notice that a nice heavy stroke through there, it's going to give me a very point cutted feel, point cutted if that's a word. Um, I'm going to go through there and just do those heavy strokes, create that texture. Guy's hair is all about texture at this length um, because it's not only gonna give them a cool look, but it's also gonna take out a lot of the bulk, which is what we wanna accomplish. Now, if they have finer hair, you might wanna create some more solid lines in there because they're already gonna have that separation and definition in the haircut. So just working the round of the head, diagonal back sectionings, following the round of the head, and uh, the elevation is nice and high. I want to create layers. I do not want to create too much graduation. Um, once you get to the top part, like around this p point right here, there's a little bit of graduation happening, but because of the heaviness of the strokes on the razor, you're really breaking down that graduation. 
So you can see how the flow just works. I love this technique. Like I said in the beginning, this is a great haircut for um, guys that are trying to grow their hair out. Um, you could wear this haircut until it's about down to your shoulders. So you would do the same exact technique, just keep working it a little bit longer each time. So flowing into the back, this is a absolutely at graduation at this point because the crown of the head is our top point. So coming straight out off the crown would be 90 degrees. So we're at almost zero. But again, heavy strokes of the razor helps counteract the heavy density that might happen in the haircut. Same thing on the other side, working that diagonal back section, connecting it to the back portion that we cut at the beginning. Heavy strokes with the razor, keeping that razor blade at 45 degrees. I've seen a lot of people in classes that keep the razor at 90 degrees uh, to the hair, which is scraping the cuticle, and that ruins the hair. You want to keep that blade at 45 degrees. It should feel uh, like you're barely cutting anything when you're cutting with the razor um, as you go over the hair. That, that's how you know you're doing it correct. So keep working diagonal back. Heavy strokes, like I said, creating that texture, taking out that density. That's the beauty of working with the razor. I love working in the middle part with the razor. Um, the beginning, I was building that structure. So you could do it with the razor as well. But I like building stronger structures for my base with harder lines and then going through and softening the lines over top of the haircut. I think a lot of people get caught up with the fact that, all right, I started it with, with a scissor, so now I gotta finish it with a scissor. You don't have to do that. You have many tools to do the job, and, and there's different ways of going about different things. So the razor is gonna create a completely different look than the scissor, and they go well together. So now we're gonna work through the top, taking horizontal sections across the top. Um, the first one, we're gonna work uh, as our guide, our guide is coming from the back to connect the front and back. Then I'm going to work that horizontal section, over direct it to the previous until I get to the middle of the head. Then I'm going to over direct everything all the way back to the middle of the head to create extra length in the front. So you can see that there. The reason I want to create that extra length in the front is because he's going to toss it back. And I don't want this haircut to look like it's following the round of the head. I want that kind of heaviness to flop over the top. Um, I think that's what gives this haircut kind of a cool look. So over directing everything back using a lot of point cutting. This is back with my DB20 scissor again. Um, this is my favorite all around wet hair, dry hair scissor. Um, is a 5.7 inch DB20 from Mizutani that we have on Free Salon Education. Now this is the Mizutani Solid. This is my seven inch scissor that I love for scissor over comb. Um, the reason I like a longer scissor for scissor over comb is just the amount of hair that you can cut at the same time as you're working. Um, and also the solid scissor, this is a brand new scissor, this is the titanium version. The cool thing about it is that because it has the titanium plating, um, it's even stronger and it just flows through that hair so fast. So even though it's a 7 inch scissor which would normally get weak towards the tip, it's not weak whatsoever. So I uh, really dig that scissor for scissor over comb. Now when you get the titanium plating, just so you guys know if you order it on our site, uh, it's a $50 upgrade and it takes a little bit longer to get the scissor if we don't have it in stock. But it's worth it. Now we're going to go through with the tip of the Chopstick Pro uh, and just work the edge. This is great for women's cutting and men's cutting just to soften uh, and create more texture around the edges of the haircut. Now I'm going to go through blow drying just with my hands. Not a lot of drying. Now a, a big mistake that guys make is they put product in their wet hair. Now water, the products that are normally made for guys are water soluble so they rinse out easy. So if you put them in wet hair it dilutes the product too much and then they just end up looking greasy. This uh, so you get it about 90% 80% dry and then put in we're using the Rusel Blue Pomade which is just a really thick firmer hold. Uh, pomade, but it still gives a lot of movement to the hair and a lot of shine. So I dig this product for this cut. I love, if I had the right hair, I would definitely wear this cut. Um, I love the length in the back. I love the top just kind of kicked over. So I hope you guys like this cut. Definitely check out freesaloneducation.com. All right. So what do you guys think? Hope you guys liked it. Let me know in the comments. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show. It's definitely, uh, it was a good one, I think. And that's a good way to sum it up. That last, uh, 
last little uh, video because not only was it men's cutting, but we used a scissor and a razor. So kind of summed up the whole day. Uh, so scissor versus razor. Hope you guys liked the episode. Um, I'm going to try to do these matchup Mondays where we kind of combine things. So I'm thinking for next Monday, maybe we'll do like balayage versus foil work. Uh, see what we can get video wise for that. Uh, 80, 20 barber was still on. Awesome. You're very welcome. Um, I hope you guys are liking the show. I, I I'm enjoying doing it. I think it brings a, a massive amount of education into an hour and 15 minutes. Um, uh, and I feel like, you know, we can get very specific with this show. So, uh, it seems to be working. Uh, if you guys like it, please just do me two favors, share it and like it on Facebook or YouTube or whatever it is. Cause the more uh, interaction that this show gets, the more widespread it gets. So, um, that's it. And, uh, any of the tools that you guys saw on here, um, I get a lot of questions on where you can get them shopfse.com or freesaloneducation.com. Just click the shop button. Um, you can go there to purchase stuff. If you want to, you don't have to, um, if you've got tools, you've got tools and you can do all this stuff. Um, really like your point cutting and razor techniques, Maria. Thank you so much. Um, Natalie, you're welcome. Roya. Um, I'm glad you like it. Thank you so much for sharing that with your, all the students at the school, uh, your classmates. Um, Oliver, you're very welcome. Um, it's awesome. One of my favorite parts about this show is that I'm seeing like Gene and Alex and, uh, tons Lynn and you know, I'm just seeing names that are becoming familiar to me. So it's pretty cool, uh, to be able and a Fox just literally ran by my window. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's so cool to, um, it's like squirrel. Um, it's so cool to be able to like get to know you guys because you know, we've had, we've been building an audience for a very long time and I've known some of you, but to be able to see, um, to see you guys in the chat and just kind of get to know your names at least is really cool. So, um, thank you again for being a part of the show. Um, again, share it, but go download the app, the FSE now app. I'm going to play uh, that video for you guys one more time before we go out, but go download the app. You can create a profile. You can uh, share your work, which I love seeing that. Um, and you know, next week they're saying this weekend, our update will be done and uh, it's going to be even the whole app's going to come to life uh, because it's going to have a new interface, um, new ways of just ease of sharing and commenting and replying and messaging stylists and there's going to be a ton of options on it. So it's a big build that we're doing right now to, to enhance it even more. Um, but already the app, the app is pretty cool. So, uh, go sign up, Kristen. Good to see you in there. Uh, here it is. This is the FSC now app. Go download it. So until tomorrow at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, make sure that you're ready. Uh, we're going to focus on color tomorrow. Maybe we'll throw some cuts in there. It really depends on what you guys request because that's what this show is all about. So if you want, if we're not live currently and you're watching this, if you just want to text uh, below, I'll get that directly to my phone so I can see exactly what you guys want to see the, the next day. And I can make sure I get some things loaded up for you guys. Um, and, and we'll also take requests on the fly and we'll do different things. But tomorrow we will do some color videos for sure. And we'll play it out. Um, yep. Thank you guys. Go download the app, get, get communicating and can't wait for tomorrow. Um, so wake up with you guys again and share some education. So thank you guys so much. And, uh, that's just that. That's just that. Thank you. A great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way. It's gonna be a great day. Chop it.
flip it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's gonna be a great day.